Hello, everyone. A warm and enthusiastic welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Aphrodite Salas, Aphrodite Sakla, and I will be the moderator for this evening's event. We have an informative, informative and moving webinar planned for you with some very special guests. The Honorable Patty Haidu, Federal Minister of Health, is joining us tonight, as are several high profile members of our community. To begin, please welcome Dr. Pierre Feller, President and Executive Director of the McGill University Health Center. Good evening to all. Bonsoir à tous. Kalispera. Au nom du CUSUM, je désire souhaiter la bienvenue à l'honorable Patty Aidou, Ministre de la Santé du Canada, to the Joanne and Melina virtual event of the Lyceum of Greek, Greek Women of Montreal in support of the Dovi Project in collaboration with the MUHD Foundation and Dr. Lucy Gilbert. The discovery made by Dr. Lucy Gilbert and her team began with a physician who is passionate about patient care and changing the course of a deadly disease. Her passion, twinned with tenacity of purpose, gained traction in the community. I want to congratulate Dr. Gilbert and thank her for all her efforts. Saving millions of women around the world is Dr. Gilbert's goal. The enthusiasm of others to support this goal, everyday people such as you and me, is propelling transformation in the immediate short term, but also over time. That is the beauty of a leading academic health center empowered by philanthropy. So thank you to the 250 plus participants here tonight. Merci, Efkaristo. J'ai maintenant l'honneur de vous présenter notre invité d'honneur, la ministre fédérale de la Santé, l'honorable Patty Aidu. Avant d'entrer en politique, la ministre Aidu était la directrice générale de l'organisme Shelter House Thunder Bay et co-auteur de la stratégie antidrogue de Thunder Bay. Elle a également travaillé dans le secteur de la santé publique, où elle se concentrait sur les politiques en matière de drogue, le développement des jeunes et l'itinérance. Elected a Member of Parliament in 2015 in the riding of Thunder Bay Superior North, Minister Aidu assumed the responsibilities of not only representing a riding, but also being the Minister for the Status of Women. In 2017, she was appointed Minister of Employment, Workforce, Development and Labor, and in 2019, she took the reins of a very challenging portfolio, that of health. Mr. Aidu, on behalf of the MUHC and the women with ovarian cancer, whom we serve with dedication and compassion, thank you for joining us. C'est vraiment un grand honneur de vous avoir parmi nous. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Feller. Je suis très heureuse d'être ici avec vous. I'm so happy to be here with all of you and happy to support um, this incredible evening and celebrate uh, celebrate and remember how important investment in research is. I want to um, thank also uh, Julie and Aphrodite and uh, and especially Doc um, MP Lambropoulos who invited me to be part of this wonderful event um, virtually, of course, since that's the only way that we're able to meet uh, right now. But uh, it, the minute she let me know this event was happening, I knew that I wanted to participate. I can't stay the entire evening, but I will just say that it is uh, with deep gratitude that the government of Canada says thank you. Thank you for all of the work that all of you are doing to raise money and to raise awareness of the importance to continue to invest in women's health research. You know, this government has been focused on gender equality since we were elected. And I can tell you as a feminist myself, it's not easy to change the tide of a culture that has placed a predominance uh, and a, a predominant focus on men and men's health issues. And I think the work that Dr. Gilbert is doing is a reflective of uh, just the gap that we still need to continue to close. When we think about the work that she's doing, it really is about saving lives and it's about improving lives as well. It's about trying to find answers earlier to something that we know can be haunting a woman's life and ending her life prematurely without her even knowing it. It also seeks to provide better tools to physicians and to practitioners across the country so they can provide better patient care. And I am just so thrilled to, to also acknowledge that Dr. Gilbert was a woman of influence 
influence for 2021. Um, well deserved, no doubt. And I'm very, very um, honored actually to be in, in her presence, knowing that uh, the kind of work that she does is difficult, it's painstaking. There are many ups and downs in research. And of course, there are many factors that can hold us back. I will also just say this, it's very important as we come out of COVID-19 that we continue to accelerate our investments in research and science overall. You know, one of, I think, the factors that we did have going for us as a country was that in 2015, when we were elected, we made a commitment to reinvest in research and science. And we made a commitment to work beside scientists, to listen to scientists, and to uphold scientists uh, in everything that we do. And I am so grateful that those early decisions we made in 2015 gave us a base of scientific research and indeed a strong scientific community that despite the blows that COVID-19 has, has hit them with, has continued to work on behalf of Canadians to uncover the kinds of uh, discoveries like Dr. Gilbert has, has, uh, has been working on and, and is now actually able to um, support better women's health with. So I want to thank everyone for having me here. I think we have a lot of work ahead of us uh, to recover from this pandemic, in particular to continue to keep strong women researchers focused on their work and supported so they can continue to do that work. Because at the end of the day, um, we know that we have incredible assets when everybody has that fair chance to participate, especially in the field of research. So you have my word that I'll I continue to be committed to focusing on uh, gender equality in the research uh, field as well. Thank you so much for joining us. The Honourable Patty Haidu, we deeply appreciate your presence, especially considering how much you are dealing with right now in light of the pandemic. So thank you for giving us some of your time tonight. Uh, tonight, we are here to support, to educate ourselves, to become inspired and to come together for the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal's Joanne and Melina virtual event. So we'll discuss the launch of clinical trials of the new Dovey gene genomic pap test under the stewardship of the extraordinary Dr. Lucy Gilbert, oncologist and gynecologist at the MUHC. Um, and we'll have a chance to, to meet some pretty incredible people. It's the third year that the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal organizes an event that is dedicated to fundraising for the Dovey Gene Project, which focuses on the early diagnosis of ovarian and endometrial cancers, as you just heard. The LGWM has already contributed $100,000 to the project to date. And with this particular fundraising event, uh, the goal is to collect another 50,000. The LGWM has already contributed that much. And in large part, we're very much helped by our sponsors. Um, the sponsors include the City of Laval and Municipal Councillor for Souvenir Label, Sandra Alou. Ernst & Young, the real estate agents Vicky Yoriadu and Nancy Zedefis of Les Immeubles Charisma, Gestion Immobilière Provision, Thalia Greek Wines, Global Imperial, the radio station CFMB, and of course, to each and every one of you, our donors. And if you aren't a donor yet and you're thinking of, you know, of doing that, well, you can do it right now. Um, you can donate by just lifting your phone and scanning the QR code on your screen, uh, or you can click on the link in the chat box. That's all you need to do. Uh, it's super easy. I just donated myself. It takes about 45 seconds and um, and you can be part of this incredible historical history making uh, event and the research. Uh, we've actually just crossed the threshold of $30,000. Um, so we can do it. We can we can raise some more money uh, and reach our overall goal of 50,000. Uh, this test really does promise to be a matter of life and death for women everywhere. So just raise your phone, scan that QR code and go ahead and donate. Now it's time to turn the mic over to the strong exemplary women who are on the board of directors of the LGWM. Meet them, here they are.
Blue, and I would like to express how blessed and proud I feel to be able to support such an important life-saving project. I am grateful for Dr. Gilbert and her team, and I extend my best wishes to all members. Hello, my name is Evangelia Tsalkidou. I want to congratulate and thank Dr. Gilbert and her team for their exceptional work. Their achievement will save a lot of lives of women worldwide. I, Aphrodite Zimberis, Assistant Treasurer of the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal, personally would like to give a big congratulations to Dr. Lucy Gilbert for her very hard work of research, which will ensure that women will be offered easy, fast access to imperative yet specialized medical examinations and will allow for the early detention and diagnosis of ovarian and endometrial cancers, which then can be treated early enough to cure them. I thank you for your excellent hard work. Hi, my name is Yula Kiskiris. I want to say a big thank you to the Dove Project to Dr. Gilbert and her amazing angels. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for helping so many women in our beautiful city. Thank you for making history in this beautiful city called Montreal. Best of luck. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I would like to wish Dr. Gilbert every success in her groundbreaking scientific breakthrough for the early diagnosis of ovarian and endometrial cancers. Everyone's contribution is important for Dr. Gilbert to succeed in her mission. Thank you. Mitina Bisbikos Priftakis. My name is Lita Pelonis. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Gilbert for the amazing clinical trials that are affiliated with the Dove project. Congratulations on your endeavors, all the best. Hi, my name is Yetza Tumas. I would like to extend the most heartfelt thank you to Dr. Gilbert and her team for this amazing, phenomenal work they're doing that will make such a difference and have such a positive impact on many women's lives. Thank you. Each year, many women worldwide receive a cancer diagnosis. As ovarian and endometrial cancer silently affect many women of all ages, medical research in the field of oncology is of crucial importance. Early detection can treat, lead to better lives, and ultimately cure some forms of cancer. But most importantly, it saves lives. I would like to congratulate Dr. Gilbert and the Dovi Project team for their continuous efforts in the research of early detection and diagnosis of these forms of silent cancer. Donate generously to the Dovi Project. It is a wonderful gift for future generations of mothers, sisters, and daughters. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Gilbert. My name is Kathy Krillis, and I am a member of the Lyceum of Greek Women in Montreal. It is with great honor and appreciation that I pledge to this amazing cause. Thank you for your groundbreaking contribution towards women's health. Hi, my name is Vicky Georgiadou, and I'm a proud member of the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal. I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart, Dr. Lucy Gilbert and the entire team. Let's all help. Let's all donate. And heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you on the LGWM Board of Directors. You're making a huge difference through this event and all the work that you do. Now we'd like to share some special greetings from our dynamic women politicians who have been front and center in their support of the Lyceum and the W Project. Next up, short messages from Annie Koutrakis, Member of Parliament for Vimy, Sandra Elhelou, City Councillor for Souvenir Labelle, Mary Darrow, City Councillor for Villaray Park Extension and Saint-Michel, and Aglea Revelakis, City Councillor for Chambry. 
Nous avons tous ressenti l'impact du cancer dans notre vie et dans celle de nos familles et de nos amis. C'est une réalité tragique. Plus de 10 000 Canadiennes recevront un diagnostic du cancer de l'ovaire et de l'endomètre cette année et plus de 3 000 mourront de ces maladies. Nous savons que le dépistage précoce est l'un des meilleurs moyens de sauver la vie des femmes diagnostiquées avec ces terribles maladies et il est inspirant de voir des personnes dévouées et engagées faire des progrès révolutionnaires à cet égard. Dr. Lucy Gilbert is the leader of the Dovey Gene Project in Montreal at the McGill University Health Center and is at the forefront of modern ovarian and endometrial cancer prevention. Her new genomic pap test has the ability to save the lives of millions of women around the world, but her project needs our support. The Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal is organizing a virtual event on May 12th at 7 p.m. to raise awareness and donations for the Dovey Project and the incredible work of Dr. Gilbert and her team. I've made a pledge in support of the project and I encourage everyone to do so as well. Chaque don contribue à soutenir une grande cause qui fait une différence dans la vie de tant de Canadiens et de femmes dans le monde, ainsi que leur famille. Ensemble, nous pouvons faire partie de l'histoire de la médecine et contribuer à sauver les vies des milliers de sœurs, filles et mères. Every donation goes a long way in supporting a great cause, making a difference in the lives of so many Canadians and women around the world, as well as their families. Together, we can be a part of medical history and help save the lives of countless sisters, daughters, and mothers. Kathe dorea sin vali simadika stin ipostirixi enos megalu skopu. Κάνοντα τη διαφορά στη ζωή τόσων πολλών Καναδών και γυναικών σε όλο τον κόσμο, καθώ και για τι οικογένειέ του. Μαζί μπορούμε να γίνουμε μέρο αυτή τη ιατρική ιστορία και μπορούμε να βοηθήσουμε να σώσουμε τι ζωέ για αμέτρητε αδελφέ, κόρε και μητέρε. Bonjour, je me présente Samra Elilou, conseillère municipale de la ville de Laval et responsable du dossier de la condition féminine. Aujourd'hui, c'est un honneur pour moi que de m'associer au Lycée des femmes helléniques de Montréal pour contribuer à cette levée de fonds qui ira financer le projet DEV. Malheureusement, aujourd'hui, je vais souligner une statistique qui est extrêmement importante et qui dit que seulement 30 % des femmes atteintes du cancer de l'ovaire survivent à ce fléau. Pourquoi? Les raisons sont évidentes. C'est qu'il est sournois et invisible. Au moment de le détecter, il est malheureusement déjà à la phase finale et les femmes qui nous, en, qui nous entourent et qui en sont victimes décèdent malheureusement dû au fait qu'il a été détecté trop tard. Alors aujourd'hui, je vous demande du fond du cœur de sauver des vies, de sauver les femmes que vous aimez et de donner pour être capable de financer ces études-là et faire en sorte que les statistiques qui s'en viennent soient meilleures, plus positives qu'on ait plus d'espoir et qu'on soit capable de sauver plus de femmes. Merci. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mary Darrow, City Councilor of Park Extension, and also I had the honor of being the first president of the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal. I'd like to thank personally the Honorable Patty Hodgley, the Minister of Health, for being here with us tonight. And I want to thank each and every one of you for attending this Joanne and Melina first virtual event in support of the genomic pap test, clinical trials of the Davi Gene Project by Dr. Lucy Gilbert. This project has helped thousands of women lives from ovarian and endometrial cancers. Thank you all for your generosity and enjoy the evening. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aglaria Velakis and I'm the Municipal Council of Shamadou. I would like to congratulate the Lyceum of Montreal for their initiative to be the driver and supporter of the Dovey Project. The Dovey Project detects early ovarian cancer. I urge and encourage everyone to donate to this fabulous cause that will help the next generation of young women to be detected for ovarian cancer. You should register to be part of these clinical trials and there is also a division in Laval. 
Donate today to save lives. Thank you. Thank you. Special thanks to each of our elected officials for showing their support for Dr. Gilbert's groundbreaking research tonight. And remember, all you have to do is go into the chat and click on the link and you'll get straight to our page at the MUHC Foundation where you can make your donation. And now a few words from Emanuela Lambropoulos, the Member of Parliament for Saint Laurent. Thank you, Aphrodite, and um, good evening, everyone. My name is Manuela Lombropoulos, the Member of Parliament for Saint Laurent. And as you know, we are here tonight to raise funds for the to, in support of the, geno the genomic PAP test clinical trials of the DeVay gene project for the early detection and prevention of ovarian and endometrial cancers. I want to thank Minister Haidu for being with us this evening. Um, your, your presence tonight, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. And as you know, as, as I expressed several times to you, um, this is a cause that's very, very dear to my heart. So thank you so much for being here. Unfortunately, the world of ovarian cancer is a world that I recently learned all about when my cousin Melina was diagnosed four years ago, nearly four years ago with ovarian cancer at the age of 29. And she's been battling it ever since. I'm sure that nobody who hasn't experienced cancer can come close to imagining what it must be like for Melina, but I can say that as a close family member who grew up with her and spent my entire childhood treating her as I would a sister, I can say that it's extremely difficult to watch my cousin go through the struggle she's going through, even though she's incredibly strong and she's fighting with all she's got. Melina will tell you all about her story a bit later on today, but what I can say quickly is that just like in most cases, they discovered the cancer late once it had already spread. In her uh, case, when she discovered she was having difficulty having children, a lifelong dream of hers, she went to get herself checked out and the fertility specialist told her she had endometriosis but offered for them to do further testing. And she agreed and that's when they discovered months later that it was actually ovarian cancer. So not only does it take away uh, sorry, she needed to do an entire, um, remove all of her um, reproductive organs. And so not only does it take away women's lives, but it takes away their dreams as well. Um, Melina didn't let that get in the way, of course. And so we love the cutest little baby, Mateo, more than anything. I want to thank from the bottom of my heart, everyone who is here tonight and who has supported this cause. I obviously donated. Um, and it, as it's a cause that's really dear to my heart, but for those of you who haven't done so yet and who are able to, I strongly encourage you to donate as it saves many women's lives. These women are our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our cousins, our friends. So please give generously to give more women a fighting chance against this monster. And I would like to thank the Lyceum of Greek Women for putting this event together and for supporting such an important cause. Over the years, you've raised a lot of money that will help make a huge difference for women and women's health. And last but not least, I'd like to thank Dr. Lucy Gilbert, who does this incredibly important work um, and who will eventually save many lives by preventing ovarian cancer, by detecting it early enough in order to do something about it. Thank you once again to everyone. Thank you, Emanuela. Thank you for your, for your words. And we're looking forward to meeting Melina in just a few moments. Now we'll be changing the tempo a bit and highlighting one of our most popular local artists, the singer Maro Litra. Here she is with the remake of a song which she dedicates to her late father. What a beautiful song. Thank you, Maro. And at this point, we would like to introduce you to the two incredible women to whom this event is dedicated. Both Melina Tsagoropoulos, a 31-year-old mother, and Joanne Fotiadis, the vice president of the WG Genomic PAP Test fundraising campaign, will now share their stories. First, we'll go to Joanne live, and then Melina will speak directly afterwards. Joanne, welcome, and thank you for being with us tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you so much to Lyceum of Greek Women for making this event happen. I am really overwhelmed with everybody's support. Everybody has a story to tell, and today I'd like to share my story to bring awareness of the signs and the symptoms of ovarian cancer and to help 
further progress and help bring the world's first early detection test to market and change the outcomes of endometrial and ovarian cancer for all women. In 2015, when we were trying to start our family, I wasn't feeling very well. I had sharp abdominal pains. I would feel full after eating very little. I was feeling very bloated. I would have a frequent urge to urinate and I was absolutely exhausted. All subtle signs that are usually dismissed. But I went to see my doctor and I had some tests. The blood tests were all normal, so I asked for an ultrasound and then an MRI. Good thing, as it revealed a growth on one of my ovaries and I was diagnosed with a rare, aggressive ovarian cancer that threatened to end my fertility and potentially my life. Like so many of us diagnosed with ovarian cancer, the subtle symptoms are easily missed and so the first gynae oncologist I saw missed it too. I thank God every day that I had the courage to advocate for myself and have the incredible fortune of meeting Dr. Lucy Gilbert. Long story short, here I am five years later after numerous surgeries and gambling my life for the opportunity to fulfill my lifelong dream of becoming a mom, I am cancer free and an incredibly proud mom to four-year-old twin boys, Lucas and Nicholas. Lucas being named in honor of Dr. Lucy as the boys like to call her. Ovarian cancer is the deadliest women's cancer and it, did, and it randomly claims five women each day, but before my diagnosis, it had not crossed my mind. But it doesn't until it affects you, until it's your mother, your sister, your daughter, your friend, your neighbor. The five-year prognosis for ovarian cancer is 10 to 30% when diagnosed in phase three or four, which is when 75% of ovarian cancers are diagnosed. The five-year survival rate increases to 80% when diagnosed earlier. However, there's no early detection available right now and the outcomes have not changed in over 30 years, which is simply unacceptable. Lucky and cancer are not words that usually go together, but they do for me as I'm one of the lucky few women diagnosed with ovarian cancer to survive. Lucky because I was diagnosed in phase one, but luck shouldn't be a factor. We need this test to save more women. We need this test to help more women like me see their children grow up. This is where you all come in. I have a dream, a really big dream, that no woman's life or potential be cut short by the silent killer. Please help me and help my big dream come true. I have the incredible opportunity to pay it forward and co-chair my doctor, Dr. Lucy Gilbert's $2 million capital campaign and send her early detection test to clinical trial and change the outcome of ovarian cancer for all women around the world. This is such an incredible opportunity to support the cutting edge of preventative care, and it's happening right here in our backyard at the MUHC. Please support this campaign generously. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And now, I have the honor to introduce you to my fellow Teal sister, my friend and incredible human, Melina Tsagaropoulos, to share her story. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us tonight for such an important event that is so close to my heart. My name is Melina Tsagaropoulos and I am here tonight to share with you my journey with ovarian cancer. It began just a few years ago in 2017 as a young newlywed, very much in love, looking to start a family with my husband, Marco. Our deepest desire to have a family of our own quickly turned and led us to our worst nightmare. It began with fertility testing after trying to conceive a baby without success for nearly six months. This is not very long, but because I was so desperate to become a mom, I didn't want to wait any further to find out if something was wrong. What initially looked like endometriosis eventually became a greater cause for concern. My fertility specialist became worried while she performed a baseline ultrasound six months after my initial visit and saw a drastic change in my reproductive organs. During those six months of conducting various examinations of my uterus, I experienced some discomfort, pain, bloating, frequent urination. However, these were symptoms I had been living with for years. So I never thought that they could be related to anything more serious. I had been told by many gynecologists throughout my life 
that heavy bleeding and painful periods were very common for many women. I had also been told by a urologist that I simply had a storage issue in my bladder, which is why I was having frequent urination. So I really never thought that these symptoms were worrisome. However, when a very painful examination of my uterus, actually, sorry, of my fallopian tubes did not work as I was in too much pain to complete the test, I was prompted to revisit my fertility specialist again, which is when she conducted another baseline ultrasound and saw that my cysts had multiplied. She was not able to see any follicles like she did the first time because the growth had taken over and the inflammation was severe. She conducted a blood test which showed high inflammation markers, but said it could be due to severe endometriosis, which sometimes has even higher inflammation markers. To be safe, she was sending me to the MUHC for further testing and with oncology. However, I still didn't worry much as I was young and truly believed that endometriosis was far more likely as a diagnosis. Within three weeks, I had seen multiple specialists and underwent a number of tests before realizing that something more serious was happening. The moment I realized that something was off was when I decided to randomly look down at my belly button one day and saw that it was purple. The specialists who examined it had no idea what it was. It was something they had never seen before. And one resident decided to poke it and it began gushing blood. This was a very late sign of cancer and a tumor growing inside my belly button. We later found out. My surgery was booked within those three weeks when specialists realized the severity of my condition and said that a biopsy would be performed on the spot to confirm my diagnosis as there was no time to waste. On December 6, 2017, I underwent an eight hour maximum debulking surgery and a bilateral hysterectomy, total bilateral hysterectomy. And my life was forever changed. Not only was I diagnosed with high grade stage 3C ovarian cancer, but my dreams of ever carrying a child and having a family were completely crushed. I remember waking up from surgery and thinking to myself, I'll beat the cancer, but how will I become a mom? It was the most de devastating loss and grief I have ever experienced. Since that day, I have completed nearly 12 rounds of chemotherapy. I have lost and regained my hair. I have entered abrupt menopause. I have gone through a year and a half of clinical trials and I have watched my bad body transform in very debilitating ways as it has gone through so many intense treatments and side effects. I have been transformed from the inside out and my life has complete, taken a complete turn. Living with this cancer has taught me just how valuable my time on earth here is. And for that, I will always be grateful. After completing chemotherapy the first time, I was told I was cancer free and decided I was going to fulfill my lifelong dream of becoming a mom, no matter what it took. Because cancer taught me that the only time we have to live is now. Our story was heard and one thing led to another. And I finally became a mom with the help of two amazing women, an egg donor and a surrogate who selflessly wanted to help us have a family. When we found out we were pregnant, everything finally made sense. This was meant to be our story. It became an absolute shock when a few weeks later, a few weeks into the pregnancy, we found out the cancer had returned. Despite being warned that there was a high risk of reoccurrence, I truly believed I had beaten the beast for good because of the miracle that was unfolding before us. Today, I continue to battle this monster while raising my son with all the hope in the world that we will overcome this once again. However, living with this cancer often feels like living with one foot inside the grave. And that is a feeling I do not wish for any other woman to ever experience. This is why early detection is key. This is why we need this test. This is why we need funding. In the last 50 years, ovarian cancer has killed way too many women and there has been little to no progress in early detection testing. We need this to be heard so that no other woman has to suffer the way that I have. I wanna thank my oncologist and her team, Dr. Lucy Gilbert, for her effort and work she is putting into this project, which has the potential of saving the lives of many women. 
I want to thank the Lucium of Greek Women of Montreal for putting this together and for all the help and support they've given me during this very difficult time. I want to thank everyone who has participated, donated, and contributed to this event, including my cousin, the Honorable MP, Ms. Emanuela Lombropoulos, who has greatly contributed to this event on my behalf. And finally, I want to thank each and one, every one of you for being here tonight and for listening to my story. I hope that together we can overcome this terrible disease and that we can give women a fighting chance at life beyond cancer. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart and have a great night. Thank you, Melina. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you both for sharing your stories with such honesty and warmth. Your words mean so much. At this point, I'd like to direct our attention to the president of the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal, Ms. Justine Franguli, who will tell us why the organization is so heavily involved in the awareness and fundraising for the Dubby project. Dear Aphrodite, uh, dear Dr. Lucy Gilbert, uh, dear Joan, dear Melina, we heard your stories and uh, that's why we are here tonight. We are here tonight to present the launch of the Dovid Gene Genomic Pap Test Clinical Trials. And we are proud as Greek women to have the privilege to address this wide audience with the participation of our Minister of Health, the Honorable Patty Haidu. This event is dedicated to our two young women survivors from ovarian cancer and uh, to demonstrate the need for the success of the Dovid Gene Genomic Pap Test for the early diagnosis of ovarian and endometrial cancers. The Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal has undertaken the initiative to spread awareness about the Dovid Gene Genomic Pap Test clinical trials because it is through our BOD member, Yula Kiskiras, that we first learned of this groundbreaking research. As a journalist, I believe in preventive medicine, and this is happening here in Montreal. As a woman, I want us all to be part of this historic initiative that will save millions of lives. As one who has lost a sister to ovarian cancer, I would like to see this new test become a reality so that going forward, ovarian and endometrial cancers can be detected early, thus enabling all women to be free of the harsh progression of the silent killer. The silent killer that killed my sister within nine months at the age of 42. At this point, I would like to thank the whole MUHC Foundation team, especially Mary Arvanitis and Lisa Mastroianni for putting this virtual event together. The Member of Parliament for Saint Laurent, Emanuela Lambropoulos for her invaluable support throughout, throughout this, as well as all our female politicians. Dr. Lucy Gilbert for being with us tonight. Joelle Malek for her support in every way possible. And of course, Aphrodite Salas, my friend and colleague who always stands by the Eliseum of Greek Women of Montreal and Maro Litras for offering us her song. I would like to say that at this moment, we reached $30,000 as uh, uh, Aphrodite has mentioned. And I would like to thank a very young couple that has gone through um, the experience of uh, cancer in uh, the family. It's Dr. Andre Senudas and uh, Dr. Athena Diamandis who offered 5,000. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody here. And I urge all women who are 45 to 70 to participate in the clinical trial. So here in Montreal, Montreal, Dr. Lucy Gilbert and her team will make history for the women of the world. Thank you. 
Thank you, Evaristo. Thank you so much, Justine, Yusini, not only for addressing the crowd tonight, but for all the work that you have been inspired to do over the years to make a difference in the lives of others. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. After 10 years of tireless work, Dr. Lucy Gilbert was named one of Canada's top 25 women of influence for 2021. She is a global expert in gynecology, oncology, and genomics at the MUHC. With the W gene test, Dr. Gilbert has made a significant scientific breakthrough for the early diagnosis of ovarian and endometrial cancers. So right now, about 75% of these cancers are diagnosed at a late stage, often when it's too late to do anything. We also know that if doctors could detect these cancers earlier, the cure rates could be as high as 80%. So armed with this knowledge, Dr. Gilbert developed the Dovey gene test to detect these cancers early enough to cure them. This is especially groundbreaking as there have been no significant advances, as Joanna had said earlier, with respect to these cancers in decades, in, in fact, in over 30 years. So to get this project from the research lab to a clinical grade test, the MUHC Foundation is raising $2 million for the Stop the Silent Killer campaign. The plan is to leverage public funding to triple this amount. So while many researchers are working on ovarian and endometrial cancers, Dr. Gilbert is the sole researcher in Montreal developing an early detection test and she is unique, uniquely positioned to achieve this goal. While labs elsewhere in the US, for example, may have more funding, Dr. Gilbert's expertise as a physician and her access to a diverse group of women, given our public health care system, will enable her to finish the clinical study needed to confirm her discovery. And this is historical. It's happening right here in Montreal. The LGWM wants to contribute to this research by raising a further 50,000. As Justine said, we've reached 30,000, so we have 20,000 more that we'd like to raise tonight uh, so that the clinical trials of the genomic PAP test can succeed and women around the world can be saved from the silent killer that is ovarian and endometrial cancers. So now it's time to hear from Dr. Gilbert herself. Please note, if you'd like to ask her a question, write it in the Q&A box below, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Welcome to you, Dr. Gilbert. Hello. Thank you, uh, Aphrodite, for that, uh, um, for that introduction. I thank every one of you who has made an effort to be here. I thank the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal, uh, Dr. Peller, the Honorable Health Minister, and most of all, our wonderful uh, Melina and um, um, uh, Joanne and Emanuela for bringing helping raise awareness and, bring, and bringing this to a higher profile uh, throughout Canada by bringing it to the attention of the minister. So thank you so much. And I'm going to go into uh, uh, a little bit of the background to how we got here. So um, you heard from uh, Melina and from um, Joanne that ovarian and endometrial cancer can affect individual women and in an intimate and very painful way and their families and the women who love them and the men who love them and the, the, their close circle. However, it also has a, a societal impact. And what I'd like you to know that in Canada and other developed countries of more than 90 cancers affecting women, these cancers rank within the top four. In terms of women affected, numbers of women affected, in, in terms of lives lost, and also it's a huge uh, drain on healthcare resources. For the past um, 30 years, uh, this uh, number has come up again and again, and I'll say it, it, the cure rates have not changed for 30 years. Look at the changes that look at the uh, um, improvements we have made in 30 years. Look at your computers. 
your cell phone. It, uh, look at what it was 30 years ago and how we have advanced. Even for the cancers, across the board, breast cancer has a 10-year survival of 84%. For cervical cancer, it's 73%. But for ovarian cancer, it's 31%. And for the important type of ovarian cancer, which affects women and kills women, the 10 year survival is only 20%. And this hasn't changed for 30 years. That's what Double Jane is set to do. So why hasn't it changed for 30 years? Are we so dumb? And the reason is, the re we haven't managed to change the cure rates for 30 years because it's detected too late. If we detect ovarian cancer, while it's confined to the gynecological organs, we can cure this cancer. We can literally get rid of it, cure it. Unfortunately, more than 90% of women, um, and this is for the high-grade serous subtypes, across the board it's 75, but for the killer cancer, more than 90% are detected after the cancer has left the gynecological organs and it's affected the small intestine, the large intestine, the liver, lungs, lymph nodes in the neck. And so we come in with our clinical trials. At the moment, the NUHC has 26 clinical trials on ovarian cancer. And despite that, we cannot cure the disease. We contain it. Now, this is the word, uh, here, the, uh, here are the words of Dr. Hartwell, who got the Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology in 2001. And he says, it cost more than a billion dollars to funnel a single cancer medication through the regulatory pipeline. For a fraction of that, new diagnostics to spot cancers early will save more lives. It's because it cost a million dollars, billion dollars to get a single cancer medication through the regulatory pipelines. That's why pharma charges so much for these medications when they are ultimately licensed. So for the clinical trials that I'm conducting, uh, uh, as I said, I've got more than 26 clinical trials with different medications. Per month, the treatment exceeds $26,000 per month per woman and, and, and still we don't care. So I, I, I'm, I hope I've convinced you that early detection is the way to go. What do we have now for early detection? So we have ultrasound of the ovaries. We have a blood tumor marker, CA125. Uh, this has been shown in clinical trials if women do not have symptoms, these tests are, do not detect these cancers early. It's been shown in more than 300,000 women in clinical trials in the US, England, Japan, and it's been published extensively. We, we wondered whether uh, uh, if there are symptoms offering these tests, uh, improving awareness of these cancers in the public and offering these tests would make a difference. And that's why the W project was started in 2008. And we have about eight satellite clinics in Laval and all over Montreal. What, and, in the, and in this, you can see that women do not need a referral. They can just call a number and we we'll offer them these tests without, without any delay we found that these tests, if you go back to that slide for a second, yeah, and we found that these tests did improve the chances of finding the cancer a little earlier in what we call early stage three and improved the chances of removing the cancer completely, but not in stage one. So, and we published this in the highest impact uh, cancer, clinical cancer journal called cancer, uh, Lancet Oncology in 2012. Next slide, please. However, the most shocking finding revealed by this, the W project was that it actually told us why we were missing these cancers. 
And it is that most high grade serous ovarian cancer is not ovarian cancer, but actually fallopian tube cancer. And what happens is the little a picture you have there of this pearly white ovary and this beautiful, delicate fallopian tube near it has these finger-like process at the end called fimbria. And this bad uh, ovarian cancer called high-grade ovarian cancer actually does not start in the ovary most of the time. Sometimes it does, but 70% of the time it starts in the fimbria. And like aerosol, like icing sugar, exfoliates and goes on to the on top of the liver behind the liver on the intestines and all the time the ovary is normal because it didn't start that so doing an ultrasound of the ovary and a blood test won't pick it up till it becomes advanced and you can see these little spots of cancer it's high up in the diaphragm um, hidden from you while the ovary is still normal. And this is what we found. And when we found this, we knew that our traditional ways won't work. Next slide. So what was the, uh, what was the next strategy then when we found this out and we were shocked and once we recovered from our shock? What I'd like you to rem what I'd like to remind you is that the biggest impact on reducing deaths from gynecological uh, cancers was made by a Greek doctor and researcher, Dr. George Papanicolo. That's why we call the PAP test uh, after him. So the PAP test takes uh, cells from the cervix and looks under the microscope and detects cancer of the cervix early. And before the PAP test came along, the second highest cause of uh, death in women was cancer of the cervix. Because of the cervical PAP test, cancer of the cervix is not a big problem at all. It's now been pushed from the second, top second cause of deaths in Canadian women to the 15th and even below the 15th. And today, this year, last year, more women die of ovarian and endometrial cancer in Montreal compared to cervix cancer in the whole of Canada. So if Dr. Papanicolo's um, uh, test, a screening uh, a PAP test could do such miracles for uh, cervix cancer, we wanted such a test, a PAP test, detect ovarian and endometrial cancer. However, if, if I could go on to the next slide, please. Remember that cervix cancer, you take cells from the cervix and you can detect cervical cancer. But this just taking cells from the cervix, the standard PAP test cannot detect ovarian and endometrial cancer early because remember we want to get it while it's still microscopic in the tip of the fallopian tube. And what do we know about the fallopian tube? The purpose of the fallopian tube is to uh, walk, walk cells from the ovary, from the tip of the fallopian tubes into the uterus, because that's how it gets the eggs from the uh, ovary and pushes into the uh, uterus. So like that, it can pick up these early, tiny microscopic cancers and put it into the uterus. But then there'll be only a few cells and we want to pick up these tiny few cells very early to cure women. And that's why we have to use this highly sophisticated, what we call uh, next generation sequencing to detect these fragments of cells and use what we call uh, machine learning to detect cancer from no cancers. And we've been working on this from 2013. And we managed to get this to the phase where we can offer it to women within the context of a clinical trial. Next slide, please. So, so we also devised a beautiful little samplers and we are improving it that goes into the uterus and delicately picks up these cells and we analyze it. And this is called the Dub gene test. And we, with this, we 
uh, we we worked on it and worked on it and worked on it till it 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 reached the stage where we could offer it to women within the context of a clinical trial. And for this, we are very very grateful. Next slide, please. Next, extremely grateful to the people who stepped in and helped us. So there's Genome Canada, Genome Quebec, the uh, Megal um, University Health Centers Foundation. And uh, together we needed about, uh, for the first, for this clinical trial to run the clinical trial, we needed about 6.24 million. And these people came together, but the foundation cannot pick it out of a hat. To the foundation, it's you who gave. Uh, donated to the foundation. And I'm extremely, extremely, extremely grateful. We started the clinical trial. It was, I would say, one of the most remarkable days in my life. On Monday, we offer it to women between the age of 45 and 70. And the sooner you come along and have it done, we have to test it on 3,600 uh, women to produce the data to supply to the government uh, and the funding agencies. And the sooner you come along, uh, you'll be able to complete this test. And, and you heard uh, Melina and um, Joanne and Emmanuel say, it, this, we should have this test offered to every woman in Canada and around the world. And that is our dream and make our dream come true, please. Thank you. Next slide, the final slide. So that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was my team. You can see that it was before COVID. We took it, I think it was in 2019, I think. Uh, it's The team has grown much more after that. Um, and um, uh, we couldn't take another group photo because we'll be all wearing masks and looking like bandits. But there we are. And thank, it's a thank you from all of us. Thank you. I'm ready for questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Gilbert. That was a fascinating presentation. Um, and we do have a number of questions. I'll start off because you were talking about the clinical trial and urging people to get involved. Um, so I'll start with a question from Vicky Kaliotsakis, who's uh, attending the webinar right now. Her question is, how long is the trial and what does it entail once you sign up? So once you sign up, if you have to be eligible between that age group, but we have to follow because it's gone through ethics, so we have to follow the rules strictly. Uh, you have the test, and then we also compare it with what is already available because this is a new test. So we have a CA125, you have the endovag ultrasound scan, you sign the consent form, you answer all the questions, and you have the test. And then it takes us about uh, 10, eight to 10 weeks to process this, okay, because it's rather expensive so we batch it together and we and then they meet with me or a colleague of mine and we give the results okay and then uh, we give people the options uh, we explain what is the significance of a positive test what's the significance of the negative test and they, we follow these women up uh, very closely for about two years to make sure we were right Are all 3600 women 3600 women yes yeah. That's extraordinary. And how many, do you know how many have signed up so far? Or are you still active? Over 600, <laughs> over 600, 700, I think. Is that right? Yes. I know so I signed up. I, uh, uh, pardon? I signed up. <laughs> okay. So I, I think um, uh, this was mentioned. Montreal uh, is a phenomenal place. The generosity of uh, uh, women and men, of course, and um, they are altruistic. They want to take part. They want to help you. That's why um, uh, my um, I work with the U.S. very closely with NIH, um, uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, my colleagues in California, all over the place, and they have. I can't tell you how many times the funds we have. But nobody, no, there is no phase three cl clinical trial 
for this early detection genomic test. Uh, no, uh, many people are working on it, but nobody has reached the stage. And poor little Montreal <laughs> has reached the stage. Why? Because of the people of Montreal and what we call the single payer system that, that uh, and people are stable. The population is stable. You can follow people up over a period of time. And all this is needed for good research. So we are making history because of the people of Montreal. This is amazing. I have, I have a number of different questions from the uh, attendees. Uh, one of them says, at age 45, I have had my uterus removed. I don't know if I still have my fallopian tubes. I do know I have my ovaries. Can I be part of the study? I'm so sorry. This is because we the practice needs to go into the uterus. So I'm so, so sorry if you can't. But the duct project, if you have any symptoms, uh, uh, we can't take the genomic pap test because there's no uterus, but we can do the standard test, which is the CA125 endovag, if you have symptoms. I showed the data in over 3,000 women it showed that uh, 300,000 women clinical trials have shown that these tests are not good screening tests, but we don't have any good screening tests. Okay, um, thank you for that. I also have, okay, another one says, can I participate? I'm 44 years old. Uh, so uh, we have to be strict about the entry into the clinical trial, but we have one subgroup of women that age does not matter. And if they have a genomic mutation that increases like BRCA1, BRCA2, that increases the risk of uh, ovarian cancer, such women, uh, they, can have, they, can, uh, they can have cancers earlier. You saw, you, um, uh, after that, you saw two very young women with cancer. And you can, uh, you can ask me a very relevant question. Why are you limiting to 45 to 70 when you be know a proportion of women younger than that get this vicious cancer? It's really because not the two women you saw and some other women like that have been extraordinarily unlucky because 95% high-grade serious cancer I, I, occur after the age of 45. Okay. Another question. This one is from Nicoletta Demetellin. If you are 70 and no tubes, could you still get ovarian cancer? Uh, if you are 70 and no tubes, but have ovaries, you can get it. It's much less common, but you can have uh, get ovarian cancer and you can get uterine cancer if you still have your uterus. So uh, if, you, if you still have your uterus, but no ovaries or fallopian tubes, you can still enter the trial. Okay. And question from Maria Kalivas. Is this test useful for a woman with tubal ligation? Yes, because it, it may not pick up uh, cancer further towards the end of the fallopian tube, but it'll pick up in the middle of the fallopian tube, this side of the um, uh, ligation and uterine cancer, which is also behaves as a type of uterine cancer called high-grade serous uterine cancer, which behaves as viciously as ovarian cancer. So yes, it's worthwhile attend, uh, taking part. Okay, absolutely. Um, another question from one of our attendees, um, uh, are the results shared with participants? So yes, how does that yes. happen? Okay. This is the early detection test, of it's course. An test. So this is the whole point is to detect. If yeah, exactly, answer, exactly. You. Okay. Yes, that is set. It's you, you are helping yourself and you're helping others, okay? That's what it is about. Absolutely. So then, and, and in terms of the participation um, in the trial, how like how many steps are there? So do you, do you, are there? Is, One, uh, you, the first day you come along, you have all these things uh, done. 
Um, so first you call the number, uh, you, um, you ask some eligibility questions or you, uh, you, and you can do that uh, on the computer online if you want. And then you come in and you have all the tests. And then the second time you meet uh, with uh, myself or a very good member of our team to have the results explained. Then you're followed up to make sure we were correct. We were, we did pick up the, um, uh, so you have two phone call follow-ups and they'll tell you the details, okay? But two physical visits. Wonderful, wonderful. And the last question that we have time for is from Joanne Vragiotis and she's asking, can you be tested once a year? She's asking a very important question, okay? Because it's an early detection test, we haven't quite figured out whether it should be done every two years or every three years or every year. So at the moment, we have fixed it for every two years, but we may make it every year. But first, let's get uh, the everybody done once at least, okay? the numbers we need, and then we can adjust. Wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Gilbert? For the, the... Just to remind women that this is the only place in the world, little old Montreal with its potholes and whatnot, is conducting the only phase three clinical trial in the world for the genomic practice. Come and help us make history. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gilbert, for everything you are doing. Uh, we urge all women aged 45 years and up to please take part in these groundbreaking clinical trials. Make yourselves a part of history, as Dr. Gilbert said. And if you wish to participate, the information will be on your screens in just a moment. Uh, you can also copy the link in the chat box. So circulate that information with your friends, send it to everybody that you know that you think might want to participate. Um, it's an incredible uh, opportunity to be part of uh, groundbreaking research, but also to be screened yourself for one of these cancers. Uh, so please, this is how you participate in the clinical trial. All you have to do is call that number or book your appointment. That's all you have to do. All women symptomatic or asymptomatic between 45 and 70 who have a uterus are eligible to participate. So please get involved in that way. Or you can also get involved, of course, because we are raising funds tonight for the W. Gene Research Project. Uh, so our screen is right here. All you have to do is uh, scan the QR code that will bring you directly to the Lyceum of Greek Women of Montreal's page on the MUHC Foundation's website. And it'll take you 45 seconds, like I said a little bit earlier, um, to make that donation and to be generous because we really are making Making history and this will save lives. So once again, a round of applause for our sponsors, the City of Laval uh, and Municipal Councillor for Souvenir Label, Sandra L. Halou, Ernst and Young, Vicky Yoriadu and Nancy Zedefis of Les Immeubles Charisma, Gestion Immobilière Provision, Global Imperial, Thalia Greek Wines and Radio Station CFMB. And of course, to you, every one of you, our donors. As we close our very special event tonight, we'd like to invite Julie Canville, the president and CEO of the MUHC Foundation to say a few words. Julie. Thank you, Aphrodite, for, for moderating this beautiful evening. And, and thank you to all of you for joining us. Uh, a big thank you to the Honorable uh, Patty Haidu and, and Dr. Pierre Feller, the, of course, the Lyceum uh, of Greek Women, Joanne Molina, Thank you so much for sharing your heart-wrenching stories with us. Mary, Lisa, our incredible events team, thank you for putting this together. And finally, Dr. Gilbert, thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for inspiring us to dream big. Your determination has been inspiring us for many years and uh, it moves me to tears to think that we are so incredibly close. Dovey is not a cause, it's a must. We must diagnose ovarian cancer early because we can actually cure it. 
the fact that this discovery was made right here in Quebec and Canada, it means that we have access before everyone else. We have the possibility of going right now to get tested. Invite your family, invite your sisters, your mother, your friends, your neighbors, please get tested. But before we can even think about testing, we need your help. We need to be able to raise the balance of the funds required for this test. Uh, Justine uh, and the Lyceum of Greek Women set a target to help us get to 50,000 this evening. We're almost there. So why don't we do this all together? Why don't you all take a few seconds, take your phones right now, take them in your hand, go into the chat box. You'll find the QR code, you'll find the web link. Please donate. This is a grassroots initiative. We have raised 1.6 million in the last two years. And this is by thousands of women, thousands of men who have joined us and who have made an effort to help us get this far. And what does this mean? Once we finish this test, once we finish this campaign, we are going to take this test and bring it to each and every doctor's office around the world. That's really important. We had some questions in the chat box about where, um, if you're living outside of Quebec, whether or not you can make a donation. You can live anywhere in Canada and receive a charitable receipt. So please, please join us today. Help us raise funds in your neighborhood. If you wanna organize an event, we will be there to support you. If you're living in the United States right now, we can also uh, work with you. We have a, an account in the United States. We would be happy uh, to take uh, your um, investment into this great cause. So join our mission, join this historic effort to save millions of women. Let's make sure that not one more woman is lost to ovarian cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Julie, and thanks to everyone. So two tasks just before we leave this webinar, donate what you can and sign up for the clinical trial. Of the Lyceum, Eustini Franguli will take part, the ladies from the board of directors, the MP, Annie Kutrakis, Councillor Mary Daros, Councillor Eclea Reverakis, Director of the Shield of Athena, Melpa Camateros, the singer, Maro Litra, the artist, Nitsa Melas, philanthropist, Vicky Nicolakakos, they've all signed up, I have as well, to be part of these clinical trials. And we urge you to join and circulate the information to all of your friends so that we can get as many women tested as possible. Many thanks for sharing your time with us tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you. Evgaristo.